There are many opinions and outlooks on the concept of the black belt, but whether you love it or hate it, it is an integral part of many martial arts, and in a lot of ways it can be a gift, and also a curse. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about why you should accept the rank of black belt, and also why you shouldn't. So if you guys support what we do here and you're enjoying the content we put out on this channel, please consider supporting us on Patreon. This, that Patreon is actually gonna help us build this channel to bigger and better things. And also there's a bunch of exclusive membership stuff that we put on there for you guys to thank you for your support. Now, specifically in this episode, we're gonna talk about the rank of black belt. We're not really gonna build up the history of how the belt started and what the colors and what the ranking system means. We've actually done that before in how many belts are in karate. So please be sure to check that video out if you wanna understand the history of where the belt system came from. Today, we're specifically talking about achieving and earning the rank of black belt or the black belt equivalent because not every art uses belts, especially if you look at the Chinese martial arts, they don't often have the same type of ranking system. It's more of like a family hierarchy set, but the whole concept of achieving a senior rank or being certified as an instructor or that kind of level is what we're talking about today, accepting the responsibilities that come with that. And we have the same divide when it comes to, to the rank itself. We have so many people who actually covet and they seek out the, the belt. Then we have others who absolutely hate it and hate what it stands for. And there's a lot, of course, a lot of gray area in between. In my personal opinion, I believe it has helped the martial arts in many ways, but I also think it's, it also damages the integrity of what the arts stand for. And again, a lot of gray area in that. So first let's talk about what is the belt, like what it actually is. It is a tool of measurement to see where you are in your curriculum. It is also a marker of the time you put into an art, and also it's just a milestone in your training. It's basically a check off the, the, the to-do list or the checklist of your training. That's all it is. It's a measurement, it's a category. What it is not, it is not a measure of your skill, it is not a measure of your superiority, or make you a better person than anybody else. And that's where a lot of conflict comes from is that some people look at the belt and you put it on and they automatically feel they're better than everyone else, or they can fight better than everyone else. And there's a lot of stigma out there. It's like, oh, you're a third degree black belt. We well, should be able to beat that guy up, no problem. There's too much competition with that. Bottom line, if you want to compare your fighting skills with someone else, spar or compete. It's, that's, that's a kind of a different topic. Black belt encompasses so much more. There's mental aspects, there's psychological aspects, there's physical aspects. Yes, you should be able to fight. If you're wearing the belt, you should be able to match the physical demands that come with it. But there's also teaching, and there's understanding, and there's academic, and there's psychological, there's so much to it. So it's not just, I'm a better fighter than you. It should encompass everything together. Okay, first let's ask, why do, why do I like the belt? Why do I think it's actually added to the martial arts? One, it's great for organization. I mean, the whole belt system is designed to break the curriculum up into digestible pieces so a person can see where things are. So you've got your beginner levels, your middle, intermediate levels, and your advanced levels. So the bell system I think is great for breaking it up the pieces like that. It's kind of like in college semesters or grades in the, in the class, you know, you're in second grade, third grade, it's broken up in difficulty and it gets more advanced as you increase. I also think it's great psychologically. Whether you, it's, you subscribe to this or not, a lot of people need to see progress and it's, you know, everyone thinks differently, especially children. They like to see progress or they get bored or they lose focus. It gives them something to focus on, not necessarily place the importance on the belt itself, but the material and, and the meaning that comes with it. So as a measuring tool, I think it adds to that. And that's why like, when we work with the kids in our kids classes before, we had a few individuals that they were young because we, you know, we accepted kids, you know, four years old sometimes, but to be quite honest, you're not going to teach a four year old self-defense techniques that they're going to climb the ladder the same way as anyone else, at least not older children. And the thing though is, you know, if you have like someone who's like in second grade, you know, they get to white belt level, a few months, you know, they can learn the material and move on to yellow belt and work their way up. A young child can't always do that. And in three months, they're not gonna be ready for their yellow belt. But what do you think that child's attention is gonna be like if you keep them at that rank for a year? So some schools, and what we did was for the kids that weren't quite ready yet, we would give them the intermediate, like a, a white belt with a yellow stripe or start putting like the tape on it. Little things just so they can say, hey, I achieved something. And I know a lot of you out there going, oh, it shouldn't matter. We understand that, but a four-year-old doesn't. And I'll tell you right now, there's a big difference in the four-year-old when they got that stripe, or they got that belt, they went, oh, I earned something. We saw a change, we saw a difference. And after a couple of stripes, they got a little bit older, then they were ready for the next junior level. And just showing a kid progress, that, that feeling of accomplishment, it does add something. So in that aspect, I think the ranking system is great because it's a teaching tool. Okay why I don't like the belt. Mainly because it becomes the focus 
It, it's just a piece of cloth. It should not be your goal. It should not be your focus. When you are training and working hard, your mental image should not be because you get to wear the belt. It should be about what you're achieving. And people get way too competitive with this. I mean, to the point where I think it's unhealthy and, and compulsive. It's like, yes, it's a milestone. Yes, it's an achievement. Yes, you should have to work hard for it. But the belt itself should not be the goal. It's supposed to represent a better version of yourself. Also, I don't like it when it's used as a marketing tool. And unfortunately, especially in America, it is a lot. There's, we, we all know about the McDojos and schools that are belt factories. People sell the idea of the belt. There's online training programs where, there's been programs where you can pay them, you get your all your disc set and the belt just comes with it. It's like, oh, watch all this and you got your belt. It becomes a selling point and I think that really diminishes what it's supposed to be and what's supposed to teach. And unfortunately, that's rampant and I think that's a negative aspect of it and I think that's one of the things that damages the integrity of the martial arts. In American Kempo, traditionally when, when we award a belt, or at least in some schools, when you're awarding a belt, um, any rank to a student, especially the children, we have them sit in the ground, they take off their old belt, they put it in front of them and they take the new belt and they form the letter L. And we tell them the letter L stands for a lot of things. First of all, it stands for love. Love for yourself, for your family, for your school. Learn to love people instead of the hate. It also stands for loyalty. You develop a loyalty to your friends and your family, a loyalty to your school. You build relationships so you don't divide, you try to unite. It also stands for longevity. Through martial arts, you wanna be stronger, healthier, live longer, and also, if need be, defend yourself. So you wanna extend your lifespan. It also stands for a lie that if for whatever reason you feel like you have not earned this belt, it would be a lie to put it on. And finally, the final L stands for lots and lots and lots, just because it doesn't matter how long you've trained, how many belts you've earned, what you've achieved, there's always a lot to learn. So I always love that symbology of the L and I try to live by that and we try to impart that onto our students and, and going forward. Because also it's also helping them understand that once you achieve the black belt, that's not the end. That's not the end of your training. It's actually really just the beginning of your real training. I like to look at martial arts and like the belt ranks is kind of like the school system. You've got your Q levels, your lower belt ranks, white, yellow, orange, purple, blue, whatever the color scheme is, those are your grades. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. You work your way up through grade school, then you graduate. That's your black belt. The black belt, the first degree black belt is your high school diploma. It means you've been through all the basics, you've been through the regimen, you've seen the curriculum, you understand how it works. Now the real degree begins, now the real training begins, and then you spend more time working on getting your second degree, third degree, fourth degree, and that's your different levels of college courses, your different masters, your doctors, all the way up. And also in the case of most arts too, the curriculum only goes so far. So uh, most karate systems, there are exceptions, but most will go up to 10th degree. But that doesn't mean there's material and curriculum that goes up to 10th degree. Usually it can go up to second, third, fourth, fifth, depends on the art, but at that point, any degrees after that are usually honorary. And Kempo's the same way too. It, our, our curriculum has gone through a few different versions, so it depends on if you're on the original at Parker Manual or the second or the third. The material might go up to first degree or it might end at third. The particular one, I, the curriculum I worked on went up to fifth degree. So after that, it's all honorary. So just because there's curriculum doesn't mean that that's what's gonna take you all the way to the top. There's still a level of contribution back into it. So now also speaking honestly too is, we've already talked about how I don't think the belt itself really means anything other than it's a piece of cloth, but what you achieved, that doesn't mean others are gonna look at you the same way. When you achieve your black belt, when you accept that black belt and you wear it, you will have the expectations and people are gonna put that authority on you and you are expected to follow that. You're expected to fulfill that. Whether you agree with it or not, you will be treated differently and you will be expected to know the material. You will be expected to know how to fight. You're gonna find yourself being held up to a lot of different pedestals or a lot of different comparisons and that comes with the territory. And handling that to me is also part of accepting the rank, that you need to be mature enough to understand that. It's also important to keep up with it. If you, if this was just a hobby, something you did and you got your belt, like, okay, I've done that, moving on to the next sport or whatever, whatever, that's, that's, that's up to you, that's, that's one thing, and that's fine. But there are people who are lifelong martial artists. When you achieve that rank, you're expected to also stay at that level. And that's easier said than done. Like you, you walk out, maybe say you get your third degree black belt and you take a year off because you've got to deal with a family issue or you're, you have to travel for work and you come back and you forgot your katas, you forgot maybe, oh, you're kind of fuzzy on this material here. You can still spar, but you don't have the endurance you had you know, a year ago. You walk in those doors, people are still gonna hold you to that third degree status. So you have to accept that. You're gonna be accepted to keep up with it. And the worst feeling is when you do get rusty, coming back, you're, those expectations are still there. And sometimes you feel like you're not the rank 
that you're wearing. So you have to mentally accept that, understand that, and get yourself back to that level. Again, it's fine, it happens. Everyone goes through this at some period in their life. Just push through it and get back to where you were. When is it appropriate to wear? Okay, you've spent all this time, you've worked hard, you've earned the belt. Where is it appropriate to wear? Obviously your own school, not a problem. Sister schools, usually just, you know, they're usually the same curriculum, you can wear it there. If you are a guest instructor or if you're invited to another school as a teacher or guest or seminar role, no problem wearing it there. Generally speaking though, if you're gonna go take another art, if you're gonna go visit another school as a student that you have not trained in, I would recommend, out of at least respect, wearing your white belt or offering to wear the white belt. Sometimes your instructors will let you wear your current rank, but just out of respect, if you go to a completely different art you've never trained in, put on a white belt, it's just courteous. And also too, if you don't, and you go to another art, sometimes you're a target if you walk in with a black belt. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu especially, if you walk into a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school and you're not a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and you're wearing that belt and you haven't grappled before, you're getting torn up. All right, now the other side of this coin, when you don't get the belt, maybe you tested and you expected to get it and it didn't happen. There's a lot of legitimate reasons why you might not have gotten it. Perhaps you need more work or maybe something wasn't as sharp as it should have been or maybe you didn't put in enough time or you weren't in school long enough or you didn't have your attendance is low and you weren't quite at the level you should have been or you don't have the endurance to keep up with the class or sometimes some schools will fail you as a test of will to see how you'll react. If you react poorly, okay, well then you definitely didn't pass. But sometimes if you accept it gracefully, you get to test again soon. A lot of different reasons. But whatever happens is when, when you don't get it, how do you handle that? Do you get mad? Do you get depressed? Or do you get determined to push forward and try again? And honestly, if you can't figure out why, if you don't understand it, it doesn't hurt to talk to instructor. Again, depending on the art, sometimes the older traditional schools, you don't question it. But in a lot, a lot of schools, if you have an open dialogue with the instructor, perhaps talk to them. Maybe they can give you insight that you weren't aware of. And honestly, sometimes it really isn't fair. Sometimes you did earn the belt, but you didn't get it. And I do have, unfortunately, a couple of personal examples of this that I've witnessed. Uh, my first instructor, which I'm we're just gonna call Mr. R, I worked for him for a couple of years teaching, and he wasn't the person I thought he was when on the floor. And there were students he didn't like, and he kind of had it out for them. And I was sitting on one of his black belt boards for uh, one of the kids, it was a kid's class student getting their junior black belt. They were like 12, 13. It was for the junior black belt. And there's one kid in particular he didn't like. This kid did his material. He did his techniques. He did the stuff. He, he had his requirements, but he was nervous. And when he was nervous, he was the type of kid who kind of grinned and laughed and he got nervous. Well, my instructor was like, oh, he think it's, you think it's funny? You think it's funny? He kind of targeted him the whole class. And at the very end, when they were lined up at the end of the room and he's walking, giving each kid their belt, he walked up to his one kid, he goes, no, he goes, you weren't serious enough. You're not gonna get your belt crush this child. The kid actually just broke down running. Mother came storming in. They had a big fight. Kid left the school and we never saw him again. And I felt horrible because I'm like, he earned it. Like he, he did just as much work. He was just as good as the other kids. My instructor didn't like him. And it was a personal thing. And I thought that was very unfortunate. Sometimes it isn't fair. Also, sometimes it's a business reason. And unfortunately, same instructor. We had an assistant instructor who was at their probationary black belt. They were just under black belt. Third, uh, first degree brown, depends on what ranking you go by. And he taught and he worked and he's like, he was ready for his black, he was ready, trust me, he could fight, he was fast and he taught all the classes. The main instructor sat in the back office at this point. My instructor was, this was several, actually a couple decades ago, he wasn't paying more than minimum wage. And when the assistant instructor asked him for a raise, my instructor goes, okay, well you'll get your raise when you get your black belt. That was always his answer for getting the raise when you get your black belt. But he kept pushing off the black belt test. When he got to the point where we realized, all right, he just doesn't want to pay him. And I kind of experienced the same thing with him when I taught for him later. So yes, there are legitimate reasons sometimes why an instructor won't test you. There's also others who maybe can't. You know, not every school. Um, I didn't know what my instructor's rank was when I first started. I was 14. I didn't even really understand the concept of, of first, second, third Dan and all that. I don't even really know what he was. He just wore a plain black belt. And sometimes when you get your black belt, they might not be able to promote you further. Certain, there's certain requirements to, and sometimes they don't want you the same rank as them. And this could be a lot of personal reasons. So unfortunately, sometimes it really isn't fair. Sometimes instructors do it on purpose. And if you're in a situation like that, you've got to really come to terms with, do I want to be at the school or not? When should you question if you should test or not? 
Well, ask yourself, are, are you ready? Do you feel ready? Are you trying to cram in a bunch of training just to rush it because the, the test is in June and it's now May and like, oh, I only got a month and you're trying to speed through the material? If that's what you're doing, then you might want to question that and perhaps push it off to the next test because you're doing yourself a great disservice if that's what, how you're going about it. We did have a student that was kind of awkward uh, years ago. It was actually for my second degree test and we had a few of us testing. He heard there was having a black belt test and he did that. He was, that last month he was trying to cram he was trying to review five belt levels that he was rusty on and learn two more in this month period of time. And he was pushing, he was pushing, he was coming to private classes. And when we were working out together, it was very, very apparent that he didn't know it all. He was rusty, he would stop, he would freeze. And it was getting kind of awkward because we could all feel the tension in the room. Thankfully, he's actually stopped. He goes, you know what? He goes, I'm not ready. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back out. And my instructor's answer was, I'm so glad you did that because I was about to tell you, you can't test. Don't force it. Again, it's just a belt. It's just a piece of fabric. It doesn't mean anything if you try to force it. So if you're not ready, wait for the next test and spend that time getting better. You'll be at a higher, more elevated level than you are now. So don't do yourself with the service by trying to force it if it's not time yet. Now, when it comes to actually testing and earning your black belt, I believe that there are two sets of expectations you're supposed to meet, your instructors and your own. Just because an instructor feels that you've earned it, doesn't mean you do or vice versa. Um, I actually have a story to this, actually with this rank right now, my fifth degree black belt. Our curriculum was kind of all over the place. My instructor liked to change curriculums and he changed material. We went through so many different versions of Kempo. Every day was almost a different day, which I loved because it made us think, it made us digest the material and break it down and do combinations. It was great. But I did have a talk with him and I said, I told him what I wanted to achieve for my fifth degree. Or when I got each degree, we talked about what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn the whole material of the curriculum. I wanted to go through it traditionally while still breaking down what we did in class and understanding it. And he agreed. And he would actually teach me with private lessons and actually help me with the stuff I wanted to learn. And when I got to the fifth degree, this is where the curriculum ended. And I said, look, I really want to finish this out. It wasn't what we were necessarily doing in class. I wanted to finish what we did in class, but finish out the traditional material just so I could be through it and know I at least did it. And then I could apply it to our other training. And he, you know, he videotaped him doing all the moves and he gave me lots of manuals. So he gave me the material to work with and I was just working with it. Well, he came time to, he was actually closing the school and he was moving out of state. And he came up to me, he goes, look, he goes, you've earned it. He goes, you've done all our stuff in class. He goes, you've, you've met all my requirements. I've been through his curriculum. And he promoted me to fifth degree black belt. This, at the time, I was conflicted because I had not yet accomplished what I wanted. I had a certain thing, amount of things I wanted to do before I got the rank. But at the same time, I had met his requirements. And I didn't want to insult him because I had done what he asked. And by his, by his standards, I had met it. So I actually, I accepted the rank. I thanked him. And then I spent six months on my own training and learning the stuff that I wanted to learn before I even wore this for the first time. Because I wanted to know that I had been, at least been through it. And I back to the L's. If I put that belt on at that time, it would have been a lie. And I wasn't gonna wear it if I didn't feel I had achieved my own expectations. Yes, I met his, but I still had my own. So if you don't feel like you've earned it, or if you've got some, like, pit, something in the pit of your stomach, you're like, ah, I wanna do this first, there's no harm in, in meeting your own expectations. Again, it's supposed to be a symbol of achievement, not just a piece of cloth. You have to feel good with the decision, and your instructor has to feel good with the decision. It's an achievement. Okay, now, if you're trying to compare yourself to others by measuring rank, you can drive yourself mad with that. And it really does no good except it, all it does is build resentment. A lot of people think that if you got your black belt, you have to be the best fighter in the world. Other people think like, no, well the martial arts are more than just fighting. There's a whole other aspect to it. You wanna be intelligent, you wanna have critical thinking skills, you wanna be observant, you wanna have better concentration, better health, along with fighting and self-defense. There's a whole, the whole gamut that encompasses that. So it's not just for fighting, it's a whole art. There's a whole, building a better you. But in that perspective, in that context, what does that mean? For example, we had someone in class when I was a teenager. He was the same rank as us. He started with us, we were 14, 15, 16 at the time. And he was climbing the ranks with us, but he wasn't quite moving the same. Like the effort wasn't there. He wouldn't really talk. And we're just like, why is he ranking? Why is he ranking? Well, we found out later he was actually autistic. And that brings in an interesting question. It's like, Okay, the arts were helping, they were helping him. He was getting better. He was becoming a better version of himself. He was becoming a little bit more outgoing. His grades were getting better in school. He was getting more attentive. He still had a lot of challenges, but then you have to ask, that stigma with that black belt, do you hold him at the same level as someone who goes to become a cage fighter? 
where's your definition? Is the black belt nothing to you but fighting ability? Or is it becoming a better you? And it's, it's not an easy subject. I'm, I actually kind of would like to see what you guys think. This is a good topic for discussion because not quite sure, you know, we're hundred percent where we should stand here because someone with special needs, they can meet all the goals. They can, I mean, the martial arts help them. And if they put in the time, they put in dedication and they get better and they become a better version of themselves and they can function better in life. Have they not earned it? Does that mean that they have to go and fight someone? Is someone in a wheelchair who earns their black belt, but they've developed health and they're living longer and happier now because of it? Are they expected to go fight in a cage? How are you measuring that? What does that belt mean to you? Either either the belt is something or, or the personal achievement is. And that's something I really would like to hear from you guys if we can keep it civil is, is where should we stand on that? Like, how do we measure this? Because, you know, when, when it comes to comparing ranks, someone can say they've got five years in an art. Well. What does that mean? Does that mean they went every day for five years or do they go once a week or once a month? I mean, you can't necessarily tell by just, oh, I've done this for X amount of years. Someone who's done it for five years, but went once a week, are they gonna be as good as someone who did it for one year and went five times a week? And again, it's, it's a hard tool to measure. And this is where the fallacy of that belt comes in, where people put this thing, where they put this expectation on the rank and the focus becomes the rank and not what that person has achieved. So that's where I think the black belt is a curse to the martial arts because it puts in these false expectations and this false sense of measurement that I think poisons and becomes toxic as opposed to trying to become an encouragement and a tool to learn from. So basically to wrap this all up, it's all about perspective. What is your goal when it comes to your training? If the belt itself is the goal, Honestly, your goals might be a little bit misaligned. You might want to reevaluate that. It's just a piece of fabric. Who cares what color it is? You put the meaning in the belt, not the other way around. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, share, and I want to hear from everybody. Tell me your stories. I want to know about your testing experience. What goals do you have? What does the rank mean to you? Or, or do you not even care about it? I'm interested in it all. Also, for those of you who have supported our channel through Patreon, I will be releasing very shortly a video about going into my testing and what my tests were like and I'll show footage as to open a discussion and to thank you guys so much for being a part of this channel. So thank you everybody and we'll see you next week.